Uh, Roddy, that was great. Thank you. Um, look, I'm probably known more because I'm an orthopedic physician, but I do, I actually do have a, a separate business which is about um, uh, public speaking in relation to uh, uh, health promotion. And I talk about asset management. I talk to people about their greatest asset is their health. And uh, exercise is medicine, which, which Bridie talked about. I mean, it is one of the cheapest and the most proven uh, ways of actually improving a whole range of health conditions. And so um, I, I do talk to people about the benefits of exercise and how it's almost now irresponsible for clinicians and health educators not to prescribe exercise regardless of, of what field of medicine they're working in because the crossover benefits, whether we're talking about obesity, whether we're talking about blood pressure, diabetes, obviously heart disease um, and, and things like that, the metabolic syndrome. But, but as I was saying to Jane earlier on, over the last 20 years there's been quite a lot of random trials looking at the incidence of cancers and people that are fit or involved in exercise programs and physically active compared to people that are inactive. And so people that are inactive have been shown to be an independent risk factor for, for breast cancer, bowel cancer, um, prostate cancer and lung cancer, not, not for skin cancer unfortunately, so that we haven't really got that side of sorted out. But people, in other words, the people that are not overweight and people that are doing regular physical activity have less incidence of those four main cancers, which are obviously major community killers. And it's never too late to start. I mean, what, what we say, you know, that the muscles don't know what age they are generally, although people will um, have a different requirement for the sort of exercise program they need to do. And it's not just about the physical benefits, which, which have been mentioned here, and, and, and it was mentioned again, about the emotional benefits, because these are stressful times for people when they're undergoing a health crisis of some sort, whether it is a, a cancer diagnosis or whether it is something to do with their, their heart disease or diabetes. I mean, patients get very anxious. And apart from the physical benefits associated with not being overweight and having more energy, obviously there's incredible psychological benefits associated with some of the chemical and neurochemical changes we all talk about the the, uh, the endorphins associated with exercise. Like like um, Bridie, I had a, 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 a an elite sporting career for nine years in Europe, and and I probably trained more than most of my patients that I get to tell them about what exercise they should do. But I often have patients who, who really do talk about the benefits and, and the, they, of getting exercise, and I say, look, I I competed for 25 years, and I never actually hit the high that they're talking about. I'm going to keep training until I have a day when I feel like I've hit that high because the endorphins can be quite good, but it is an important thing in terms of emotional health, just feeling better about themselves, and as I said, and, and the chemical changes which have been associated with some of the, the benefits related to antioxidant public um, production and things like that, which, which are anti-carcinogenic. So, so I think there's a real push and a real pressure on the medical profession to prescribe what is really a, one of the cheapest and most readily accessible medications in the world, and that's to get people out there doing something, just move. Um, you saw the Tiger Woods where just do it. I mean, that was a great, great line from Nike. Um, but people just have to move. Move to live. MTL is a company that I that I set up some time ago. And it's just about whether it's walking, whether it's a, um, I'm going to tackle Jane slightly because I think incidental exercise is incredibly important. And I talk to people about walking through an airport and facing an escalator versus a set of stairs. And you just look at where the general public go, up and down. I'll just go to the, the travelators, as the Americans call them. And so there's a chance just to walk up one flight of stairs. Even in this building, you know, I, I, I really get annoyed when people take the, the flight to go up the lift. So I don't ever want to see you in a lift going one flight up. <laughs> <laughs> because it's that simple exertion which creates some calorie burning and creates some muscle yes, enzyme changes. Because it doesn't, see, exercise intimidates people. Sorry, John, I'm going for a long no, time. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to go down. Exercise intimidates people. Yes. Because, so, sorry, sorry. <laughs> My name is Richard DeBoer. <laughs> um, to very, I'll finish Richard very quickly. But, so people think about exercise and they think of sports people. And they think they have to train. And that's a very intimidating thing. And it's, it's all about, as I said, about moving and physical activity. And, and being overweight and, and, and having less energy and having um, fatigue related to lifestyle it is it's just a common thing across people. And, and you must know examples of people that say, I feel so much better since I did this. And I think that's a common thing. And people don't know until they've done it. And it's really just that first step that people have to take. And one of the, one of the challenges for medical practitioners and GPs and people that I talk is having the skills to actually know the exercise prescription to give people, and that's where exercise physiologists 
and some of the other um, personal trainers and things can be great resources for clinicians if, if the doctors themselves don't have the knowledge to do it. So, so I just want to congratulate Jane and, and the department really on having this topic because it is such a critical part and I think just getting the well-being and people feeling good about themselves just through body image, having the energy, losing some weight and, and just having someone to talk to regarding their own personal health outside of the pure medical model is a really um, encouraging thing for, for the patient which is something we're trying to do as doctors to, to, to spread that message. Sorry Jane, that was a no, very long answer. <laughs>